American troops have spent winters abroad in many hot spots and battle zones for the past 18 years. And while we may debate these wars, there is simply no way to repay the debt we owe our servicemen and women. While they are on the front, we get to enjoy the holidays. For many military families, the empty seat at the table leaves an unfulfilled holiday season. Families, friends, and many organizations also express their generosity by holding drives for food and even letters to our troops. For those old enough to remember, Bob Hope brought his show and a day of smiles to many who spent their holidays overseas. His effect on morale was immeasurable. In a letter dated December 25th, 1967, while on a tour in Vietnam, 19-year-old Christopher Ammons from Norfolk, Virginia, explained to his family the impact of the show and how lucky he felt to be selected to see him. So here is the letter from Private Ammons, performed by Vinnie LaRusso. Yesterday, Christmas Eve, went and saw the Bob Hope Show in Lyke. Hey. My last letter said, Dion, but it was held at our base camp instead. I and one other soldier were the only ones that went to the show from our platoon. I thought it would be one person from each squad, but it was two people from each platoon. About 6.30 in the morning, they lined up about 50 of us from the battalion going to the show. We had to wear clean fatigues issued to us that morning. Half an hour later, a Chinook helicopter picked us up and flew us about a 15 minute ride to Lyke. Each of us went to our company area and waited a few hours until the show started. We walked to the show and man, we all got a close seat at the front. They had reserved seats. Seats were sandbags for those from Budang and from the field up front. We sat in the fifth row of the seats and waited about 45 minutes before the show started. The Bob Hope Show arrived, and he walked down the middle of the aisle, swinging his golf club, followed by all those girls. The stage was already set for him, and about 15 minutes later, the show I couldn't believe it. There was Bob Hope right in front of me, cracking jokes and dancing with those girls. The Barbara McNair, Raquel Welch, uh, Phil C Crosby sang also some songs too. I wish I had some film on my camera during the show but I still will always carry the picture in my mind. All those movie stars. I just could not believe it. General Hay came on stage and gave a presentation to all of Hope Trio. At the end of the show, we all sang Silent Night with the Stars. The show will be televised January 18th on TV. They had a lot of cameras taking pictures of us. You might see me when it comes on TV. They said the film the part as we sang Silent Night. We then left Lake Hay by Chinook to Budang. Last night, everyone was singing Christmas carols. At one bunker, there were about 18 soldiers singing songs and having fun. It did not last long until our LPs reported movement. All of us had to go to our fighting positions. The three LPs were from my squad. They said they saw two figures in the bamboo jungle moving their way. The 105s fired illumination rounds near the NDP for about 15 minutes. Later, the LP reported a movement going away. No doubt, there are a lot of VC around here since we are so close to the Cambodian border. Their hardcore NVA regiments might be hanging around somewhere nearby. As usual, we have guards every night from our bunkers. Each of us had an hour of guard two times during the night. Each squad had a radio, and every five minutes, one platoon asks for a situation report from the guard. I went off my first squad, 1200 in the morning. Everyone started calling on my radio, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. My other time at the guard was from 0300 to 0400 this morning. We got a lot of packages today, candy and all sorts of goodies. A Yui arrived with a Santa Claus who passed out cases of Coke and beers. The first infantry band arrived by Chinook at our NDP and played Christmas songs. But I didn't get to hear much of it since 
I want an OP at 0700 this morning. We all got some clean fatigues to wear, and they also had a big Christmas lunch. General Haig came here at Budang, and I was in the chow line five feet away from him. I got scared about going to him and telling him who I was. I guess those two stars he was wearing kept my mouth closed. I am now on OP again this afternoon with PFC Castro. We took the place of our other two squad members so they can go inside the NDP and have lunch. It did turn out to be a nice Christmas, though it was Vietnam. But next Christmas will be a better one because I'll be home. Thanks for all of your cookies and candies you sent to me and wished everyone a happy Christmas and a new year for me. Love, Chris. If you are enjoying our show, if you've been to a past VTC show, been behind our stages or in front of our stages, we are asking you to contribute. Go to brewstertheater.org and make a donation now. Thanks again. See you in 2021.